Hello and welcome back to Let's Go. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to get into the battery compartment of the KQI 3. The next video after that will be taking off the rear motor and to do so, we do have to be able to get into the battery compartment to unhook all the wires. When you are working in the battery compartment, you do need to be very careful. There is a high voltage battery in there and we don't want anybody getting zapped at all. So just be careful when you're in there to do all those bits and pieces. The tools we're gonna be using today, uh, so we're gonna need a hairdryer or a heat gun. This isn't necessarily needed however if you do want to preserve the glue on there it's better to heat up the pad here so that you can then take it off easier and then put it back on later you'll see that in this video you're going to need a three millimeter allen key head or an allen key i'm using an electric screwdriver in this case because there are quite a few screws a phillips head screwdriver some loctite or thread locker and you're also going to need a four millimeter security Allen key head. So what I mean by that is the Allen key has a hole in it just like a security Torx bit and that is for the bolts that are in the battery. I will leave links down in the description so you can easily find the tools. Just before we get started I just wanted to let you know as well that when you are putting the bits back together that you do hook up the original wires. I made a little bit of a mistake when I did that I put everything back together, tried to turn the scooter on and realized, damn, I've not put the wires back together. So I had no power and I had no uh, motor working. So I had to go back in, do it all back together and then put it back together once again. So let's get started. Right, so the first thing we want to be doing is going ahead and removing this rubber floor mat here. To do so, you can either peel it straight off, um, however, you will probably have to uh, find something to stick this back down again or buy a new one. In my case, I'm gonna go ahead and heat it up gradually, remove it, and hopefully that will preserve the glue. And then we can then pop it back down again. So let's get onto that. I'm going to start with the back edge here first. There we go, removing nice and easy on that one. There we go, we have gone ahead and removed the uh, the rubber decking. As you can see here, most of the glue or the adhesive that they've used has kept intact, which is fantastic. A couple of little spots here, but I guess we could just heat that back up later and uh, it should adhere very nicely. So when placing this down, place it down on the rubber side, otherwise it's gonna stick to whatever you put it to. As with anything, make sure that you are taking plenty of photos of where everything goes. That way, when you come to reassemble it, if you forget about where a piece goes, you know exactly where it's going. So the next part we're gonna do is remove this base plate here and it's held down with 18 screws and they're all Phillips head. I'm gonna go ahead and use an electric screwdriver to speed up the process. Here we are, so all the screws are removed. And make sure that we just keep those together. As you can see, none of them have Loctite on them, so Loctite is not needed in this case. It's always handy to have some Loctite on hand just in case you need them. And that should just lift straight out. There we go. 
going to make sure that you press this button down before you take it out. So we're just going to leave that to one side and any screws that have fallen out, make sure that we put them back with the panel that we've just taken out. Right, so now we've taken off the main plate, what we're going to do is take off the under plate and we have a further 18 bolts under here, which is the Allen key style. And we also have eight Phillips head screws. So four on this side, four on this side. We're gonna take all those out, keep them together once again, plate it in a sequence that you know exactly how it goes when you put it back together. Take lots of photos again, and then we should have the battery compartment underneath. So the Allen key heads are three millimeters. You can either use a hand tool. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and use my electric screwdriver again, as it's gonna be a little bit quicker for me. There we go, so all the screws are out. As you can see, they have added some Loctite to these. So make sure you put some Loctite or thread locker on there, make sure it's the blue one when you place them back in. There are a couple of hidden screws which I've just found. So there's 18 on the deck and then there's two down these little holes here, bringing the total to 20. So I'm gonna get a little extender bit on there. Straight out, fantastic. Right, so if you're curious about how I keep everything in order when I'm taking these videos apart, I take them out and I lay them down in order that I took them out and then I put them back in the correct order, but in reverse. So you can see I've got the rubber mat here, sticky side up so it doesn't stick to the floor. And then I've got the uh, outer base plate with all the screws in their holes. Then I have the battery protection plate, which is gonna go on next with the screws in a magnetic jar so they don't go anywhere. Okay, so now we have full access to the battery. At this point, I don't wanna just go around touching any wires. There is quite a bit of voltage in here, so it is a 46.8 volt and it's a 10.4 amp hour battery. At this point, before you want to proceed any further, take lots of photos of the configuration of the wires, how the battery is situated and how the controller is positioned as well. Because if you get these wrong, nothing's gonna work. Now we're gonna go find the main power wire that sends power to the whole scooter from the battery. And it's this one here. I'm gonna go ahead and undo that one. Make sure that they are away from each other. One's into the control board, one's into the battery. We don't want those touching again. And now we're gonna wait for around 30 seconds for anything in the controller to dissipate. All right, so we've waited around 30 seconds. What we want to do now is actually remove the battery. And in this case, we're looking at some Allen key heads. So let's find out which one it is. Let's start with five, because five is usually the sweet spot. And we've run into our first problem. So these Allen keys have uh, a security piece inside. There we go. So there's four bolts holding down the battery, one in each corner. Remove this tape here. That's the controller wire leading up to the control system at the top there. And then we should be able to just pull it. All right, so there are some wires leading into the controller as well from the batteries and they're, they're glued in. So we need to make sure that we uh, 
find out where these are going to so that we can easily unhook them. And in this case, I think they've uh, they've run it under the controller, so we're probably going to have to pull out the controller as well on that bit. Uh, for anyone wondering, that is a 4mm security Allen bit. Taking out the controller, there is some thermal paste, so just be wary of that. I'm going to put that to the side. I'm going to get some good photos of the wiring and the controller itself. So there's a white, yellow and green going to the back of the controller. And that slot there. And then you've got your charging cable there as well. So you're going to unhook the charging bit. There we go. And unhook that wire there. Fantastic. So that's the controller out the way. Now we should be able to just lift the battery straight out. All the Allen key bolts are stuck in their slot and they are also lock tighted. Now, if you want to go ahead and, you know, replace the controller at this point, just make sure you take loads of photos, pull out all the wires, get the new controller, buy some thermal paste, make sure you've got some thermal paste for the new controller, because obviously they put it there for a reason to manage the heat. And then once you're done, we're gonna pop it back in its place. So it's got some locator pins on the bottom there, so it can go in nice and easy. I've got some th fresh thread locker here, and we're just going to add that just to the ends, a little dollop, and then place inside. And then we go ahead and tighten those down. Right, so we've got a fresh new battery to go in. Make sure that when you are putting your battery in, you are facing the wires towards the controller. On the bottom here, there are some locator pins and they will go in. So make sure that they're seated correctly. Make sure you're not smothering any wires or you know, getting in the way of any wires. There we go, so that's in properly. Let's get this one out of the way. And once again, we're gonna add some fresh thread locker to each of the bolts. Just a little dab on the end is just enough. Right, and now we're gonna go ahead and just snuck them down. We're gonna do opposite corners first. Now we're going to plug our wire in where we uh, found it before, making sure it goes in the right way, and our charging cable as well, which is this one here, to the charging point. Uh, we're just gonna... And then the final step for putting your battery in is to make sure your two connector cables go together. I think they're maybe XT60 cables. And then we're gonna go ahead and pop everything back together and we should have our scooter ready to ride again. So a little word of warning on the battery. Just make sure that when you take the old battery out, you don't put it in the bin as it says here. Please take it to a place that recycles these type of batteries. Please don't go ahead and open this up yourself if you don't have the experience to do so. Only somebody with battery experience or an electrician or someone that knows what they're doing should be opening these up to then create other things with it. Please take it to a recycling facility. And last but not least, we're gonna just make sure that wire's secure and stable. So once all the wires are connected, and everything is good before you do everything back up what we want to do is make sure that the scooter turns on as it's expected to do so we're going to go up here and turn her on perfect she's now on there's no error codes everything seems to be working 
and we should be able to go ahead and put the casing back on. Right, so next part to do is to pop the battery cover back on. So we're gonna grab all the screws that we kept from earlier and pop the cover back in here. Hide the brake wire under there. Great. And now we need to get the uh, Phillips head screws. All right, next thing to do is pop all your screws in where you found them with your uh, three millimeter Allen head. Preferably you would lock tight them, but in this case, I'm not going to. Right, so we've done that plate now, and time for this plate. This is gonna be a little bit more awkward to, uh, to put on, because we have the folding latch that we have to get into this hole here. So what we're gonna do is just pop our finger down. There we go, clip it in done. Make sure it all lines up. Perfect. And now we're going to go ahead and screw this one down. This one doesn't need any Loctite. These are Phillips head screws. Right, that's that step done. The last thing we have to do is pop on the rubber mat. Now, what I'm gonna do is pop it on there and then heat the mat up after the fact and then squish it down so it softens the adhesive. So we're just gonna get it all lined up, which is easier said than done. There we go. That's your mat sorted. And now we're gonna just go ahead Blast it with a bit of heat all over, just to make sure the glue is fully softened to stick down to the board. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. It's not a hard job to get into there. It's just making sure you keep everything organized so you're not gonna get things mixed up. If you like this video, please leave a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing. It helps me out quite a lot. Also, if there's any other videos that you want me to do, please let me know. I'm going to be doing a few more over the coming week. Next week's video, we've got the rear tire removal. So stick around for that one and we'll see you next time.